one of the most important lessons to learn is the law of the echo, the law of the echo. The Lord in the scripture tonight talks about learning. And so what we have to do is learn and relearn out of the law of the echo. Stories told about a young child who was, was camping with uh, his father in the mountains. And the little boy went wandering off uh, in, from the campground and went to the edge of the mountain. He looked at the vast mountain range and so forth, and he, and he hollered out, I hate you! And of course the word came back, I hate you. The little boy was afraid and ran back to his father and said, there's a mean man on that other mountain who says he hates me. The old man was wise, of course, and took the little child to the edge of the mountain and said, now listen, son, I want to teach you a lesson. Cry out, I love you. I love you. And of course, the message came back, I love you. The father said to the son, learn well, my son, the law of the echo. Because in life, to large measure, what you give to others is what you'll get in return. The law of the echo. Think about your own life. Isn't it true? If we're dishing out hatred, vindictiveness, viciousness, impatience, or whatever it might be, if we're dishing that out, it's often times that we get it in return. And then we become bitter and wonder why people are treating us the way they are, failing to recognize that we should hold a mirror up in front of our faces, to, in front of our lives, to see that in fact that's what we're dishing out, and that's what we're getting back in return. Lord Jesus says in the scripture today, one of the most beautiful scriptures, he says, come to me and learn from me, for I am humble and gentle of heart. Come to me, he says, and learn, and learn, and, and learn from me. So the Lord's inviting us to draw close to him and to learn from him. You know, I think it's so often that we don't learn very well the, the lessons the Lord's trying to teach because we don't listen. We don't take time enough to, in a certain sense, sit at the feet of the Lord and listen to him and see in his life the example we should follow, the lessons we should learn from him. Because as he says in the scripture, come to me and learn, for I am humble and gentle and gentle of heart. I think there's an awful lot of harshness in the world today read the paper every day and you see all kinds of examples of harshness, violence. Chicago I, the other day it has more murders than it had in the last 20 years or something like that. Murders are up here in this town too. Violence, not just in action but in words, the impatience, I see it in myself. I'm driving along, somebody's not doing what I want them to do ahead of me and in the car ahead of me and I lash out at them. And I'm grateful that there's no one in the car but God to hear what I had to say about those people. Isn't it true? We're impatient. It's really, when you stop and think about it, we are dishing out to others what we're getting in return. Look at the state. I don't need to go into the politics, but look at the conditions of our country from top to, to bottom to one side to another. It's an awful lot of violence and viciousness, and word, action, attitude. And the Lord says, come to me and learn, for I am humble and gentle of heart. To be gentle doesn't mean to be a sap or let everybody walk all over you. Come on, walk all over me. Hit me again. It's not it at all. A gentle heart is a, one who's not a softy, in the sense of letting other people walk over you, but gentle in the sense that we understand that we don't have to dish out back to others what they give to us. We don't have to be vindictive or vicious or give back one evil for another evil. To be more gentle and forgiving as God is forgiving of us. You notice God never says, go ahead and sin. He says, oh, go ahead and sin, you're an exception. 
You ever heard the Lord say that to you? There are ten commandments, but you're an exception. You only have to obey eight. I don't know that the Lord has ever said that to us, but you know what? When we recognize the Ten Commandments and we see how we fail in a lot of areas, he's gentle of heart and he's always ready to say, Come to me, all you who labor and find life burdensome, and I will refresh you. I will forgive you, for I am gentle of heart. He's not interested in, in kicking us around because we do enough of that for ourselves. He's not pushing us down. He wants to lift us up because he's gentle of heart and invites us to be the same. Being gentle of heart is what the Lord wants to teach us today. Think about gentleness in your own life. How gentle are you in forgiving others or how you deal with others? How gentle am I? Not, uh, you know, it comes down to loving the sinner but hating the sin. Being willing to forgive, give another chance. I think uh, I was talking to somebody after the last Mass, and uh, there were a number of people around the table, and I think every person around the table could recount how in their own families it would have been a good turn if they had seen more gentleness in their own families in, turn, in terms of a lot of vindictiveness and a lot of family feuds. I bet there's not one person in this, this church that hasn't seen in his or her own family at some time or another a family feud. Family feuds go on for years and years. What example are we giving our kids? No wonder our kids are growing up violent because we've been violent ourselves in terms of the vendettas and vindictiveness and viciousness that we've had for one another, particularly through family feuds. The Lord's inviting us to change our hearts today and to be more gentle. I remember in my own life, my father died 10 years ago. And I hope he doesn't mind, but I'm going to tell a story about my dad. My dad was no sap. My dad was from Italy, and he was hardcore, hard as nails. And if you crossed him, don't cross him. Don't cross my dad. He got into it with his brother. My uncle's also dead. And uh, they were at odds for 25 years. 25 years of brothers would not talk to each other. And whenever I mentioned my, bro my uncle's name, oh, look out. Dad had something to say, and it wasn't positive. But you know, as the years went on, it began to wear on him, and the Holy Spirit was working on my dad. Because one day, downtown, my dad was going to the bank, and he saw his brother cross the street. His brother would have ran away had he seen my dad coming, but my dad snuck up on him and grabbed him and held him close to his heart and said, Brother, it's time to forgive one another and to move on. And there ended the feud in a simple way down in downtown Des Moines. 25 years. When are we going to get over these things? I recognize that we have to take the first step like my dad did, and I, I'm very proud of my dad in that way, in many ways. When are we going to begin to, to learn from him the gentleness that comes from, from his heart? He's no sap. And he forgives those who come to him. And he makes the first step sometimes. Not always, sometimes, always. The Lord's always seeking out the sinner. He doesn't wait for us to say, okay, come to him groveling in the dust. He's always seeking us out, wanting to forgive us, wanting to heal us, wanting to lift us up, brush us off and get us a new beginning and give us the strength to move on and to begin to change our lives. But we're running from him. We're running from him. It's not that he's not seeking us. It's that we're running from him. We need to stop and turn and to come to him and to recognize that I have a lot to learn from him, that I'm not my own teacher. We think we know it all. We deserve it all. We deserve to punish others. We deserve to be in the judgment seat. We deserve to be on top. We deserve to make people pay. Don't get, uh, what is it? Go and get mad, get even. We have a lot to learn from him. There's a story told about a, a youngster who had a coach who tried to teach him how to play baseball. And this kid was an obstinate kid and knew, thought he knew it all. So he didn't listen to the coach on how to bat and how to, how to hit the baseball. 
So one day in the backyard, the kid was throwing a, the ball up. I think I told you this one before, but he threw the ball up and he said, wow, boom, what a hitter. And he misses the ball. Threw the ball up again. He said, wow, what a hitter. Misses the ball. Throws the ball up again. And says, wow, what a hitter. Boom, misses the ball for the third time. And this time he says, wow, what a pitcher. What a pitcher. He was unwilling to admit that he needed to listen to his coach on how to hit the baseball and made an excuse when he couldn't hit it by calling himself, instead of a poor batter, but he's called himself a good pitcher. We need to recognize we have everything to learn from him. To quit making excuses and alibis for our attitudes which are filled with darkness a lot of times. We're filled with hardness, hardness of heart. Not only hardness of head, but hardness of heart. To want a heart transplant. At every Mass, it's like we have surgery on the altar. If we let ourselves lay on the altar with the bread and wine and recognize what happens at the Mass, it's like we have a heart transplant surgery every Sunday. The Lord wants to replace our heart and put His heart where our heart is to make our heart gentle and kind like his own. You know, it's six years into the new, new year, six years already over in, in 2017. I can't believe the time has gone so fast. Last uh, January 1st, I gave a homily about my New Year's resolution. Do you remember what your New Year's resolution was? How many of you remember? How many of you didn't make one? How many want to go home now? A lot of us made New Year's resolutions and didn't, didn't uh, even move close to accomplishing the, the resolution. Some of us made them and forgotten them long ago. But I think one of the resolutions we need to make today, halfway through the year 2017, is, Lord, may I come to you and learn from you, for you are humble and gentle of heart. Can we say that, Lord? May I come to you and learn from you, for you are humble and gentle of heart. Lord, may I come to you and learn from you, for you are humble and gentle of heart. Amen.